Okay, I'm, I'm going to try to demonstrate the art of fly tying. We have a lot of gadgets around here. The main thing is a vise. The vise is something to hold the hooks that you're going to tie the imitation of the fly on. So it has a, this has a clamp and uh, the hook is clamped in in this pointed end of it. Tightly. So, uh, let's see, what do I have? I have a stack of stuff here. I have a box with a few hooks. I have uh, winging material. Those are uh, hen necks, and they have certain, and this is a, a rabbit face hair. Uh, here we have different kinds of, of softer hair, muskrat and, and stuff like that. Peacock curl, just generally softest, I think, partridge stuff. Little combination of feathers. There's uh, uh, just an old black crow, piece of turkey tail, and pheasant tail. And on here then we have, uh, have rooster necks. I have different kinds. I got the the dark brown, which I'll be using, the uh, ribbed here, and then the, the golden or the tan. And I have uh, different different uh, hides here, furs, that I'll use for the winging on, on this first fly that I'm going to tie. I have this, this one here because this is going to be uh, a light-colored caddis fly. Okay? So we start by attaching the thread to the hook. You have to wind it over itself. Get back here by the tail end of the hook, over the, right over the, the hook eye. Nip the little end off. <coughs> The next step is to wax my thread so it will hold the, the dubbing material or the, the fur. It's kind of a tacky thread. I'm one of these guys that, that don't believe in, in making the body of the fly too thick, so I use very little uh, fur. This is off the face of the rabbit, and it has what they call the guard hairs and the little fuzzy hairs and everything else in it. So I just dub that to, to the thread here, and you can, can you see how that sticks to it? Claude? Yes. And I'll turn this down so I can twist it. Wet my fingers and give it a spin. And just kind of make a yarn out of it. Okay. Get my thread back. Bring it back up there and start winding forward. I get up here toward the eye of the fly and make it a little a little thicker there okay now i got to the point where i have to find the material that i'm using for wing in this case it's a bleached deer hair find a little clump of that not a lot because the wings of the naturals are very thin and flat. I have to even the end, so this is a two-piece thing here that you stick the hair into. Tap 
it on the table three, four times, and that evens up the ends of the hair. Oh, well, didn't work. Didn't work that time. Real get mad at me. I'll have hair all over here. <laughs> Supposed to work, sometimes it doesn't. That evens up the end so it looks more like the, the natural wing. Get rid of the stuff that I don't need. You lay this on the top of the hook and you have to really squeeze it tight. You don't want it to flare up too much and you want, you want it to stay on top of the hook. So now I give it a couple of turns. And I can pull it tighter and wrap it up. Now you can see how that flares out. It looks like the actual wing of the insect. And lift up the front end of those fibers. Wrap it under there. Take my little gadget here for tying the, for tying the knots. I usually give it a couple of knots. So we got it almost done. Nip the thread so it doesn't. And the next step is to nip these off so it looks like the little head of the creature. Trip any loose ends. Straighten it out. This is nothing but a little thick lacquer and uh, I like to use that because it smells good <laughs> but it, it dries quicker and uh, you can get just a little bit on the, on the end of your needle which this is this is nothing but a needle stuck in a, uh, an old toothpaste handle something to stand there then when you got a picture of it now what mm -hmm. okay that's the finished caddis fly and we'll do another version of that again insert the hook in the vise But good. Sings a song for you. Start all over with the thread. Start at the head again. You aren't going to find that hook. <laughs> I walk around in my bare feet, and that's how I find them. No, you won't see it. It's the same color as the carpet. So now this one we do a little differently here. We we uh, lay hackle. This is a this is a rooster 
hackle and uh, they specially breed these so they get these nice long pointed feathers and I gotta find the right size here for this fly this is a number 14 hook which is pretty average for most flies the only difference between this and the last one the first one I tied is that this one has uh, these fibers being wrapped around the body of it and what that does it imitates the the legs of the insect in this case a caddis fly Dubbing on that thread again so it sticks. You can see how it sticks to the to the wax that I put on there. There are other ways of doing it, but I prefer this so it doesn't the body doesn't get too thick. Okay, makes a yarn out of it. Pull the thread back and wind the Fur yarn up to the front of the, to the eye of the hook again. The difference between this one and the last one, like I said, is the the hackle stem on here that uh, imitates the the legs of the fly. I usually tie this off so it doesn't hook. I give it a little knot there, and it doesn't add any bulk to the fly but it just makes it a little more secure when you're working on it. This is what they call the hackle players and it makes it easier to grip the the feather or the hackle and so you can spin it around on the hook. Open it up, clip it on there and wind it up one one full turn around the end and then just kind of spiral up to the eye of the hook just a couple of winds around there to make it secure And again, I like to put a knot there so it doesn't slip when I clip it off. Some fellows are able to hold these scissors in their hand while they're doing this, but I haven't ever been trained like that. So. And now you can see that those are spread out on both sides of the hook, all the way around it actually. And uh, I'm going to use a different fur on this one. Just a little longer and a little different color doesn't make too much difference. There, there are millions of, well, I shouldn't say millions, but there are thousands of, of uh, different kinds of caddis flies. And uh, this is one of the easiest to mimic. 
Get myself a little clump of fur if I can get a hold of it here. And again, put it in my. Worked twice. Again, you got to bring that up there so it just hangs over the, the bend of the hook. Bring it up, lightly go around it. I like to face the, the fur a little bit toward me because it's going to spin when I tighten it up. As you can see, the ends flare out. And go underneath here to tie it off. thread Don't get it too close to the knot there we go another one a little more lacquer here I don't think the trout is going to worry about that, but some guys think they have to be perfect, you know. So this is a, another version of the caddis fly. I probably should have left it in the vise so you can get a better shot of it, huh? Why don't I, I do that? I did. Hmm? I did. You get it on it? Mm -hmm. I, otherwise, I could leave it in the vise and you could take a picture. Wow, these, these flies are moving on their own. Yeah, they do that. They seem to. <laughs> yeah, so these must be like really good. We, uh, I'm not even touching it and it's uh, doing it's your, the it's, dance. It's your magnetic personality. Yeah, it's doing <laughs> the dance. So... Hopefully the trout will be dancing around yeah, the Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, it will go towards that's, the trout. And that's what we hope and they do. Okay. Well, now we're going to tie a, a different pattern. And this, this fly, it's called the Adams. And it was developed way back in the 1930s by a couple of fishermen over in the lower peninsula of Michigan. And uh, I don't know how it got the name Adams, but anyhow, that's what they call it. And it's, it's a fly that uh, is my favorite. Uh, one season I used nothing but different sizes of this fly and I probably caught more trout that summer than I ever caught in my life. <laughs> so. This is a secret fly, right? No, here. nothing secret about it. Everybody has it, and uh, they love it. And uh, this takes two, two different colors of hackle. Takes what they call the striped one is called a grizzly, and this one is called just a brown rooster. Uh, if you want to get invested in this. Uh, a neck like this costs about fifty dollars, 
<laughs> but you can see you can you get a lot of feathers of different sizes. You can tie a lot of can different you, Can you put it in this for a second? Let me see what it looks like. <laughs> How's that? How's that for a beard, huh? Yeah, that looks like a really good. That, that's a good goatee right there. Yes, it is. <laughs> I couldn't raise one as well. <laughs> so I use the two different colors of a hackle. Now I, I got to measure these because they have to be. This is a size 14 hook, and uh, I got to get the right feather. Otherwise, they're too much feather there and they don't land or float properly. That's one for there. Well, I gotta get one of these brown ones, the same size roughly. Some guys can gauge these by their, with their eye, but I can't do that. And we got to prepare the, the hack that you pull down on from the, from the end of it, and so it flares out, it's easier to tie, and then I usually trim this end because that's where I, tie it into and gives it a couple little barbs to to tie it down with let go of there. if you're going to tie a lot of these one pattern that in the same setting way then it's it's good to prepare all your materials ahead of time and then have them sitting there so you, you can uh, just pick them up as you go they have the big tackle and and fly distributors have little ladies in the orient the pacific rim i call it and uh, They'll sit down and tie maybe four or five hundred, even a thousand of these of a certain pattern in one day. But what they do is they have all the materials are laid out for them so they don't have If that material gets wet, if that muskrat fur gets wet, then this white thread will kind of show through and give it a, a look. I get it started here. Start winding the thread on just like it just like I did for the caddis pattern. I can't hardly see this thread. As you can tell, I wouldn't I wouldn't make much money tying these for a living. <laughs> as well as you can and again make sure that they're going to be fastened to the top of the hook bring it over loosely one more time pinch it good and then tighten your thread up and go back to where you want it okay that gives the tail now you want to trim these front ends off. Now I'm going up to the front again. This, I should have done this first. I got to put the wings on here. For that I use a grizzly. Whoop, where's the hackle? Where did it go? There it goes. No, this is the one I want. This is the winging material. This is, uh, they raise these 
hens especially because of the certain size of this feather and the way it lays out as you can see it's very and you got a lot of different sizes here and I'll need two of them roughly the same size so one They should be, the wing should be about just a little longer than the hook length from the eye to the to the back end, to the, to the bend. So I like to prepare my feathers like this. And you can see there's a natural curve to them. So when I, before I tie those on, I, I get, so they're flaring the opposite way. And you want to get the, the, the tops of the wings as close to the same length as you can. Grab them where you're going to tie them on. Fed back. Grip it tight again. Bring it around. And draw it tight. A couple lines back and back to the front. Trim the ends off. Now we're going to stand them up, so you got to get right back to where you tied them down. Hold them forward like this, or hold them backward like this, and wind underneath them. Not too far, so they won't stand up. You can see now they're standing up. So you, now I'm winding back to the. In this case, these the two different color hackles for the. Tie these tie these feathers on, so there's a dull side and a bright side to these feathers. And when you tie them on, you tie the dull side forward. Oops. the body material on. Again, wax the thread so it holds, holds the, the fur. A little pinch. This usually calls for a little darker body material. Again, give it a twist so you can make a yarn out of it. Wind the body again. As you can see, this makes a very thin body. I'm going up here 
up to those tackles that I'm going to wind on afterwards. I'm going to go in front of them so I don't tie those wings down. In front of them with a couple of twists. And again, give a knot. And now comes the real use of the hackle pliers. These you wind on, wind around one at a time, depending which one is forward. Well, let's get the thread down here in my way. About three or four winds of of each color hackle. And again, tie it off. Give it a knot. It's nothing but a half hitch knot is all you're tying. Put this one out of the way. Be careful you don't cut your thread. <laughs> dexterity means a lot in this business. And when you get older, you don't have the dexterity. You know, you got to right wind the grizzly in. So. No fool, I brought a good finished one along. <laughs> okay, you can see it all right? Yeah. The little wings hanging up. Yeah. Well, we'll try to tie another one anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what should we tie you this time? Uh, well, let's do the. Let's try to. To do that, Adams again. Okay, we got one good one tied there. Cheated. those in there because those are all for you now if you want to put them in there. Okay, now this will be a uh, wet fly wood pattern. Different style of hook. You can see it's got a little curve to it. Yeah. And I'm going to, let's see, I got a, it's going to be a pheasant tail. So I better get my stuff lined up here. He's back with it. Hold on. I'm sloppier at home. <laughs> As you can well imagine. Now this is a, this is an, 8 -oh thread. That's re that's as fine as I've used so far. But uh, and this will start out the same way. Start at the eye of the hook and wind it back. This is a different shaped hook, so it uh, it gives the the body a little curve. Way I am at home too. Okay. 
We're going to do the pheasant tail. I mean the, uh, the uh, peacock curl first. Buy them in this way, they strip them all for you. You don't have to do any of the work. They're always charged up, of course. See how they do that? Electricity, huh? Friction. As you well know, you can get this peacock feathers in all different colors. In this case, I just have the, the kind of a green one. So, now the first thing I'm going to do is tie these in. I got all four strands together. I tie them in here. Boy, they're, they're really charged. Look at them to me. This is terrible. Come on, man, guys. <laughs> Wonder if a wedding will make any difference. Sure. I'm going to cut these off shorter later. Because now i got to wind this. Uh, now i got to have my copper wire on it. This serves two purposes. It gives a, a little flash to them and it helps hold this peacock curl around the hook. So we got that going now. We can come forward. I get this turned out of the way. Keep it from winding together. Just this is just nothing but the peacock curl wound around. And you should really twist it at times. for them in Wisconsin Rapids, Stevens Point, Rosh Holt, Amherst, all over. And uh, those gals are really good. But there again, that's all he did. Okay. I'm going to get this on the hook check on there.
somewhat. What kind of a bird did you have back there? <laughs> now this we wind in the opposite direction. So it kind of holds those peacock fibers in place. And it adds a little sparkle to it. Very little, but if it gets in the, in the bright light, it does show off. this this is just a uh, tail feather of a regular turkey Now I'm going to have to get some more peacock oil. I think I cut that off when I shouldn't have. Knit this off now. I lost one. Why did I do that? Stay in one place. You watch that, I think. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. I didn't, I've never had this problem. I don't think I got them tied down yet. Oh, yes, they are. Now then, we bring this little 
thing over this. This is uh, where the wings of the insect come out of. When they're hatching, they come up to the surface and then that splits open As you can see, let me get this a little further along here. It's looking halfway better now, anyhow. Doesn't usually take me this long to tie one of these, but today, special occasion. Now I'll trim the tails off because they should be short. And a little lacquer on the thread again. I usually make sure that those eyes are open, <laughs> otherwise you get on the stream and you try to poke the leader yeah. material through there. They don't. Well, this is a uh, different. You got a picture of it in your camera, yep. there, no? Yep. Um, peacock girl.